share something very briefly. Um, some time ago, there were great walls in opposition against the people of God. At that time, the God of Israel simply said, you're not going to have to lift up a finger. All you have to do is surround the walls of Jericho seven times and on the seventh day, take out your shofar and sound it. And the walls of Jericho came tumbling down all the walls except for one place where a harlot and her friends who helped the people of Israel was saved. It will sound a shofar this morning and just as an encouragement that you may know that every political, financial, and religious walls that are against the work of our God and our Father and our elder brother, Jesus, have to come down. Amen. Big one too. that have taken their time to come and to be here. I'll be introducing some of them later on as they'll share some words of encouragement uh, for this community. We're going to begin our singing with the song, Come People of the Risen. Thank you. 
Father, you are the giver of life and of every good and perfect gift. So we thank you this morning for the Church of Christ, for the Christian heritage that for nearly 250 years has undergirded our nation, its freedoms, and its righteous laws. We gather here to thank you for our forefathers who believed in you and in your son Jesus Christ and who respected the moral teachings of your word, even though they didn't always live up to them, and neither do we. Yet by the light of your infallible word and by your grace, our nation has repented of sins such as slavery and many unjust laws that treated people differently based on race and ethnicity. Father, by your grace, we've come a long way, and yet we have much for which we still should be grieved. Father, we grieve for the millions of unborn human lives that have been unjustly and inhumanely terminated, for the continuing scourge of abortion. Father, we grieve for the part disrespect of marriage and our rebellion against how you have created us, male and female, in your sight. And Lord, we must confess that your church shares the blame for at least part of it for these and other evils. Because rather than being a light in the darkness, we too often have joined the darkness. We've forsaken your teaching. We've taken the easy road rather than living holy lives before you. Lord, we must acknowledge today, even as we rejoice in your love, we must acknowledge today that if you were to destroy this nation for our many sins, you would not be unjust. And yet, we gather here with hope because you are a God of mercy who does not rejoice in the death of the wicked, but rather that we might turn from our sinful ways and live. So, Father, we pray this, this day for our nation that you would turn our hearts back to you, starting in the church that bears the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. As we see this Christian flag raised today over our city, let us first of all be humbled before you, confessing our sins and pleading for your mercy that was bought with the blood of your Son, Jesus. Let the flying of this flag be a call to every Christian living here to boldly speak the good news of your salvation for all who will repent and believe in Jesus, our Lord who was crucified, who was raised from the dead on the third day, and who will one day come to judge every nation and every person. Lord, your church and her gospel that she's been given Proclaim what is the only hope for this and for any nation. So we pray today that you would fill us with a passion for the mission you have given us. That this would happen for the good of our nation and for every other nation on this earth. We pray this all in the name of Jesus our Savior and all God's people said. Amen. Amen. Will you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God.
the people that came out to help us raise this flag this morning. Uh, I don't think it's an understatement when I say that the city of Torrington would not exist today if it were not for the establishment of a church in this community. In fact, the establishment of a township could only occur if it had a church um, that can do the celebration of divine services and sacraments and burials. That's actually um, written right from the state's charter in 1628. So in 1741, the first settlers of Torrington established the first congregational church that initially functioned out of the homes of settlers and a fort that existed on the western hills of the city of Torrington, up near Clark Hill, for any of you familiar with uh, Clark Farm. For decades after the mid-1740s, our faith-based community has grown, including Catholicism, Judaism, Islamists, Baptists, Methodists, Lutheran Church, Presbyterian Church, as uh, Episcopal, Episcopalians, Pentecostal Assemblies, our African Methodist Episcopal churches, just to name a few. Uh, we see our community changing, growing, becoming more diverse. Today, I wanted to take this opportunity to acknowledge and express our gratitude to our faith-based communities for the great work that you do in the city of Torrington. Everything from sheltering our homeless, sponsoring migrant families, supporting our residents in emergencies and through the most difficult times of their lives. We must embrace our diverse faith communities and support them in their efforts to grow and thrive in this community. From my grateful heart and on behalf of a grateful city, thank you for the gifts, guidance, and goodwill that you bring to strengthen this community. God bless all of you and God bless this great city and great state and great nation. We'll now have the uh, raising of the uh, Christian flag. Pastor John Jonathan Gold here from uh, First Congregation Church, along with John from uh, City Hall. <laughs> He's here. John, what church are you at? St. <laughs> Anthony's in Richfield, then St. Peter's and John in here in Torrington. Sometimes the Arlington. Didn't need to put you on the spot. Way back when, 
Uh, her tune was a little different that not many would know, so we've written it to stand up, stand up for Jesus, a song I think many Christians know. So I hope you'll join in singing along. Church of Torrington, and as the mayor said, uh, there had to be a founding church, and we are the founding church of Torrington. We've been around for 282 years, uh, but there are many churches in this community who serve the community well, who have a connection to our history. Our connection is we ordained the first man of African descent in America. We baptized John Brown. We have provided food and shelter for people throughout the years, including during the 1955 flood. And then most recently, we were still able to distribute food during the pandemic to those people in need. It is our Christian community that has been there to provide for others and encourage other people's hearts. The importance of the Christian faith community to this city and to the surrounding area, I don't think can be overstated. Christianity has played a significant role in shaping the social, cultural, and moral fabric of our city and cities across our nation. The, 
Christian Church, our fellowship contributes to the well-being and vitality of a city. First and foremost, the Christian community brings a sense of moral and ethical values to the city. The teachings of Jesus Christ emphasize love, compassion, and justice. And these principles serve as a moral compass for individuals and for the community as a whole. In a world that can sometimes seem morally adrift, the Christian community provides a steadfast anchor, promoting values that encourage kindness, empathy, and a commitment to loving your neighbor. The Christian community often makes it, takes an active role in charitable work and social services within the city. Many Christian churches and organizations are involved in initiatives aimed to alleviating poverty, providing shelter to the homeless, offering food assistance, and supporting vulnerable populations. These efforts not only directly benefit those in need, but also contribute to the overall welfare of the city, seeking to reduce homelessness and poverty-related issues. Moreover, the Christian community fosters a sense of belonging and unity among its members. Churches and Christian organizations often serve as hubs for community gatherings and events. These spaces provide opportunities for people to connect, form friendships, and find support systems. This sense of belonging can have a positive impact on the mental health and overall well-being, creating a stronger, more closely-knit community. The Christian community is often at the forefront of promoting education and literacy. Many Christian schools and institutions offer quality education to children and adults alike. And these institutions contribute to the intellectual development of individuals and help raise a well-educated and informed citizenry that is essential for the progress and prosperity of our town. Well, the Christian community plays a vital role in the life of Torrington and the surrounding area. It brings moral values, fosters compassion, engages in charitable work, creates that sense of belonging, and contributes to the education. As we strive to create a city that is more prosperous, but also compassionate and caring, it's important to recognize and appreciate the significant contribution that the Christian community makes to our urban landscape. Together, we can work to make Torrington a city that reflects the best aspects of our shared humanity, and the commu Christian community is an integral part of that journey. I would ask now that if, uh, when we have Pastor Lopez from the Iglesia Pentecostal Unido Latino Americana Church, with his son. God bless you. God bless you. I'm going to speak in Spanish. I'll be translating for today. En esta mañana quiero darle gracias a Dios. I have to first give thanks to God this morning por la oportunidad que nos da de estar aquí. For the opportunity that He allows us to be here today. Gracias a la alcaldesa Eleanor Carbón. And we also thank Eleanor Carbón, our mayor. A cada uno de los pastores aquí presentes. And every single one of the pastors here present today. Y a cada uno de ustedes, hermanos en Cristo. And all of the brethren and sisters in Christ here today as well. Por la oportunidad que tenemos. For the opportunity that we have here today. De exaltar. To exalt. Y glorificar. And glorify. Al que vive por los siglos de los siglos. He who reigns forever and ever. Al que está sentado en su trono. He who's sitting down in his throne of glory. Y que en esta hora. And in this hour. Estoy completamente seguro. I'm completely sure. Que está recibiendo. That he is receiving. La alabanza, the praise, la adoración, the adoration que su pueblo, of his people levanta en esta hora de la lift mañana. up his name here today. Gracias a esta nación. Amen. Amen. Thanks to this nation. Por la oportunidad que nos dan. For the opportunity that allows us. Por abrirnos las puertas. To open the doors. Para que nosotros. So that we. También seamos parte de esta nación. Can also be part of this glorious nation. Que nos ha acogido. They have taken us in as their, as their home. Con sus grandes bendiciones. Their great blessings. Nuestra oración. And our prayers. Es poder. Is to be able. Corresponder. To correspond. A esa bendición recibida. To that blessing that we have received. Para seguir entonces to then, en este lugar in this place, compartiendo be able to share la palabra de Dios. The word of God. La Biblia nos enseña the Bible does teach que hay un lugar there is a place 
la Nueva Jerusalén. New Jerusalem. En ese lugar, and in that place, el apóstol Juan, the apostle John, vio una multitud, saw a multitude, de millares, of millions, y millares, and millions, hombres y mujeres, men and women, de todo pueblo, of all people, de toda lengua, of all tongue, y de toda nación, of all nations, alabando al cordero, worshiping the lamb. Yo creo, and I do believe, que para poder llegar allá, to arrive to that place, primero tenemos que aprender, we must learn here today, a compartir juntos, to share with one another, aquí en este lugar, here on this earth, amarnos to love one another los unos a los otros. Respetarnos to respect los unos a los otros. one another Pero sobre todo, but above all else ser luz en medio de las to be a light among darkness El que ha de venir vendrá. he who's going to come is going to come soon y no tardará. he will not tarry God bless America Dios bendiga America Dios bendiga la nación God americana. bless the nation of America Dios bendiga cada uno de ustedes, God hermanos. bless every single one of you Dios bendiga la familia de Dios. And God bless the family Amen. of God Despite the tremendous loss that the events of 9-11 brought to our nation, it also brought people together in a way that I had not seen before, nor have I seen since. But the good news is that today, a diverse group of people are gathered here to celebrate the unity and the love that the cross of Jesus Christ symbolizes. We may be divided by creeds, confessions, and by denominations, this flag reminds us that we are united by the grace, mercy, and unconditional love given to us by our Heavenly Father through the finished work of Jesus Christ upon the cross. Galatians 3.28 20, reminds us that there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And only in Jesus will we find our true identity. This flag is a reminder that our nation, our state, and our city were formed in large part to bring honor and glory to God. The flag reminds us of the standard that we are called to live up to, a standard that we have failed to live up to at times as a nation and as a people. But in these failures, this flag is a reminder that we need God's providence, grace, and mercy in fulfilling this high calling. The city of Torrington has reflected and continues to reflect the unity that the gospel calls us to amidst the diversity that makes up our community. Our city's architecture displays both historical examples of and new expressions of God's faithful providence over the community of Christian believers who have decided to make this city its home. They're a reminder then and now that God's beauty is richly expressed in the diversity of our city's population. The flag is not a political symbol or representative of a desire for theocratic political power, but rather it is a symbol of a love and eternal hope that transcends politics. After all, it was the political forces of Jesus' day that conspired together to place our Savior on the cross. Jesus consistently reminded his disciples and the multitudes who listened that his kingdom was not of this world. His kingdom offers something that political power never can, eternal peace and security. And it is a hope that transcends the brokenness of the world in its various forms. And this flag reminds us that the gospel message is for all. The flag is a reminder that all are invited to come to the cross, where the blood of Jesus offers us forgiveness for the sins which have separated us from our Heavenly Father. 
cross on this flag reminds us that God has made reconciliation with him possible. This reconciliation is never forced or coerced, but it is freely offered by God to all if they would turn in repentance and humility to him. The flag is a reminder that God's love goes hand in hand with his truth. It's a reminder that his word is the foundation for all truth. It's where we find the true definition for love. By his grace, he has given us his word, which sets boundaries for us, for our protection, and allows us to thrive when we follow his commands. A loving God that explicitly warns us about the behavior that can destroy us and offers us the power to live in a way that honors him by the power of the Holy Spirit. This flag is a reminder that the forces of evil will never triumph over his church and that his love and his light will permeate even the darkest of times. Thank you, Pastor. Well, that's my list. <laughs> Anyone else? I don't want uh, to bring the worship band. Yeah, I know Pastor uh, Father Potty's here. Yes, if you would come forward and say a couple of words. From St. Mary's Church. This is our father in our own language, Syria language. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. somebody on the spot that either Angie or that guy standing next to him, Ron, would be willing to close the list with a benediction after this song. You can handle that, Ron? <laughs> Ron's been only in the community for what, 60-something years? Close to it, right? Uh, I know he's, he's retired from the ministry. Well, retired from but uh, yeah. after this song, if you would come forward and make a benediction for us.
coming out today in this celebration. expect to share anything, but I wrote about two pages of notes here. <laughs> I just want to close this morning. Again, thank you as Pastor Steve has for coming out here. This has been a wonderful day. God has blessed us. One of the unique things was listening to our Latino family speaking and sharing Christ. And even though we may not understand Spanish, you could sense the Spirit of God there. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And I don't know how many of you here this morning speak Syrian, <laughs> but as all of Father was sharing, you could just sense the Lord in those prayers. Amen. Yeah. One of the unique things about Christ doesn't matter what language you speak. When you lift up Jesus, we're drawn to God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the diversity of your family here. We thank you for the groundbreaking work of doing something marvelous in your name for this city, for this region. Your word says, if you are lifted up, you will draw all men unto yourself. And here's your family, from diverse backgrounds, denominations, independent works, traditional, non-traditional, Pentecostal, charismatic, fundamentalists. It doesn't matter. We're here as sons and daughters in Christ. So just bless the seeds that have been planted here this morning. Bless us as we leave this place. Bless those who have participated. Bless those who have organized it. And let us leave this place knowing that God will do mighty and glorious things through his church. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord one more praise. Amen. God bless you. We all depart and head our different ways. One more time. Well, I think we all should just give God the glory. So everybody knows amazing grace, right? Yeah. So we're just going to sing that final last verse that goes something like, Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Sunday morning.